I recently picked up a wireless Saturn pad from Retrobit, and I thought I'd share with you guys some of my impressions of it. The box is very similar to the old school style that Retrobit copied with their wired controllers, but they went a little further here with the packaging than I expected. The controller comes in a nice storage case that holds everything. The everything being the controller itself, one receiver for the Sega Saturn system, and one USB receiver for platforms like the PC, Switch, or PS3. At first I had thought Retrobit had shafted us on a USB cable to charge the controller, but it's underneath the insert in the storage case, which also houses the instruction manual. The build quality of the controller is pretty much identical to the wired pads they released earlier this year. It's modeled after the original design, right down to the texture of the plastic housing and the smoothness of the digital pad and buttons. The USB charge port is at the top of the controller, as is the LED indicator. The faces of the tried and true six button variety, which includes two additional buttons, home and select, which you'll need for systems outside of the Saturn. Popping in the receiver to my Saturn was easy, but my Saturn did not see the controller at first. I needed to press the sync button for it to work, which then picked up properly. When you power it up again, all it is really needed is for you to press start on the controller to wake it up and connect it. Of course I wanted this mostly for my Saturn, and that is where I tested it for the first time. I used a wide range of genres to test and see how everything felt, starting with the 3D fighting sensation Virtua Fighter 2. This series heavily used the base A, B, and C button layout, and I have acquired a heck of a feel for that layout over the years. The Retrobit wireless pad performs great here, my fingers sliding over the buttons accurately for every punch, kick, and throw. It felt exactly as it should, so I moved on to something a bit different. Platformers don't really put a controller through its paces, but it's a good way to test timing to see if it responds without a lot of issues. Jumping around in a fast game like Sonic felt great, especially the bonus stages from the later games which tend to expose input lag and lesser devices. Happy with the results here, I moved on to something that would test that digital pad a bit, so I loaded up a shoot 'em up you all may appreciate. A good shooter requires you to be on the move constantly. You won't be sitting still much in these types of games, so they are a good test for a digital pad. As expected, the Retrobit wireless Saturn controller's D-pad was solid. I actually found it less loose than the wired pads they did, mimicking the original controllers much closer. Less wobble means more accuracy, and I zipped around in Thunder Force 5 like a champ. Of course, no genre tests a controller like a good 2D fighter. The fireball, uppercuts, and constant mashing of the diagonals really put a pad through its paces, and I played through one of my favorites three times start to finish to see how it fared. Like any new controller, she was a bit unforgiving on special moves at first. I had to loosen her up a bit, find my groove, and before long she was taking my commands like a champ. I even let my daughter get some matches in. 
who beats the hell out of every controller she uses, and the Retrobit wireless Saturn pad never dropped a connection or missed a beat. We tested it together at about 15 to 20 foot distances from the Saturn with no trouble, and that included it being right next to my router. As each playthrough wore on, my accuracy improved with each special, and I was really happy with the way the wireless pad performed. I also wanted to test the pad out on other platforms, so I fired up the old Nintendo Switch to see how things went. I again had to sync the controller to get it to be recognized, but once I did, it was up and running. I played my Sega Genesis collection and put a few games through their paces. The layout is nearly one-to-one -to, -one to the Nintendo Switch default controls, meaning that A is A, X is X, and so on and so forth. You'll want to make sure to take this into account for games you are playing, as it may have a big effect on how your buttons are laid out. The home button functions perfectly on the Switch, allowing you to navigate every part of the system as you should. Moving on to the PC, I popped in my USB receiver and opened up Kega Fusion. The emulator did not see the controller at all at first, so I unplugged it and tried again. After a few seconds, it finally registered on my PC and the emulator saw it as a standard USB controller. I set it up and off I went. I tested it across a few of my favorites and everything worked as it should, felt as it should, and I was ready to move on to see what other programs it'd work with. I opened my Model 2 emulator and tried some Dead or Alive. The emulator again failed to see the controller. No matter what I did, it refused to see it, until I read the instruction manual and saw a way to change it over to the X input mode, which then showed up just fine and ran Dead or Alive like a champ. To switch to this mode, you want to hold Start and the B button for a few seconds until the LED on the top of the pad turns purple. Keep in mind that this is the X input for the PC, and the controller will not work in this mode for other platforms. You want the controller's LED to display in red for your Saturn, Switch, and PS3. Get ready. When Retrobit announced their wired pads for the Saturn and Genesis, I admit I wasn't too interested. I owned plenty of wired pads that already worked great, so I didn't really need any of those. What I had lacked was a decent wireless solution for my Saturn. I had been through the purchasing of the classic infrared pads Sega released all those years ago, but those things were not viable in this day and age. Retrobit really came through here giving me something I truly had a need for, and doing so with an attention to detail that does the original pads proud. Input lag was a non-issue, the range was impressive, and it worked on all the devices I tried with no issue. At just $35, I am impressed with the results here, and can't really fault much about it. I do hope that Retrobit does a white version in the future with the colored buttons because my white Sega Saturn is just begging for one of these with it. I'm Sega Lord X. Thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you next time.